I have a soft spot for Laguna because this was my home track um, when I was learning to race. And so I have a lot of laps here. And so I just have that like nostalgia from, from racing here when I was, when I was a kid. So um, there's not a lot of passing that happens at this track, but there's been historically some really good races here. So uh, yeah, I, uh, I really like the track. The low grip thing is always what, what makes it tough because you go into the weekend knowing that everyone's going to be complaining about the grip and so that makes it tough. But we just uh, heard they announced that they're repaving it next year. So I'm really excited to see like after they repave it, um, what happens to the racing here. It's tough. Like I love the track to drive, but uh, in the right car, like in the LMP car, I think it's hard work, but in, in the right car, it's a lot of fun. This track's really unique in that the surface is quite old, so it's worn, but it's also very rough. So you have a low grip surface that's also a high degradation surface. It's worn and slick because the rocks have kind of been worn over and they're smooth on the top, um, but they're rough and the tire goes down between the smooth parts and it like wears the tire away as well. You can have a car here, if you don't get the balance right, instead of, you know, the front might, um, wear much faster than the rear, or the rear might wear much faster than the front. And then you could have a car that might start with understeer and end with oversteer. And so the, this track can be really challenging to engineer for because the car is, like to the driver, unpredictable. I've heard all kinds of complaints from drivers at this track. It's like, when you're an engineer going into this race, you're just like, well, this is gonna be a tough weekend because I'm just gonna get yelled at all week by the drivers. <laughs> can't pick out a thing and go, I did that really well, like I used to be able to. I used to be able to be like, I can point at this thing that I found and we fixed it and now we were better. Now it's more like everything went well, like that's like a group win coming into this weekend. Uh, it's a kind of a series of quick sprint races. So it's uh, really quick weekends, you have to be on it. Like this weekend was two practice sessions, qualify and then race. And so we didn't have like a ton of time to sort everything out. You gotta kind of hit the ground running and I think it went, went really well. Everybody's like meshing together really well. We get to the track, everybody knows their job. Everything unloaded really smoothly. We got right to work. So our, our, our group is, and I'm not just saying this because it's my team, but like our group is the best I've worked with in any pro team. Like everybody just, it's a cohesive unit. Everybody's got each other's back. You know, it's, uh, it just works really, really well. And it's been something that I've been striving for ever since we set the team up. And like this year is the year where I've been like, oh man, the crew is like so good. So I, I'm actually more busy when I'm not in the car than when I am in the car. So I'm spotting on the radio for Dwight talking him through traffic, everything, keeping him safe, out of trouble. That's a big part of it. And then also driver coach, in between sessions, data, video, all sorts. So FP1, we, we had a really good session. Um, the car was right away fast. We made a couple of small changes and, uh, and they were improvements. The, there was little to change from there. We could, we could race that car happily. And we, we would have been fine. But we got kind of caught out. We had some damage from, uh, we went offline. Um, just before we were coming in the pits and the very edge of the splitter, it's, it's a piece that bolts on and uh, it, it actually kind of starts the downforce from the side. That was broken and pushed off and uh, there was like a, I don't know, five millimeter gap and it was off at an angle. And uh, that was enough to completely uh, destroy the downforce of the front of the car. So Ryan, Ryan's out there driving around like this thing is evil. It, it's not handling right and Scott's making changes and uh, the changes aren't doing what we expect them to do. And so it's just, you know, you start running in circles. One of those sessions where you're just chasing your tail and then finally we said, let's change the front. That was the problem, we gotta come in and all of those changes we put in over the previous hour, we had to take back out. I mean, that kind of thing happens. It's a, it's a complex set of things you're changing on a car and sometimes you can get led astray and you have to find your way back.
you can kind of think of the car, if you think of an open wheel like Formula One or IndyCar, they've got the wing at the back. The difference is this car has the fenders over the top and you can't see the front wing. So the front wing is built into the front nose as a splitter and it's hard to tell, but there's exits and ducts that go all through the bottom of the car um, to create the downforce. It's got enough arrow that you have to trust the arrow. If you take a corner, if you take a fast corner too slow, like turn one at Sebring, it's gonna be hairy. It's a tricky car, but it's, uh, it's a popular one for a good reason. It's a really, the Orca is a really good chassis and uh, it's taken over LMP2. If you're not running an Orca, everyone's like, they're not gonna win. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a strong race here last year, and uh, I think we came back, you know, kind of expecting to have a good car, which we did. We rolled off the truck very strong. Yeah, it was uh, all run, just a great effort. You know, we, uh, we're really strong as a team right now, and, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's really nice to have a short turnaround. Uh, we had kind of hit on something that was going to work, so uh, we had a really good, uh, good race, uh, battled all the way to the end, great pit stops from the era guys, and uh, you know, good job from Dwight at the start to uh, hand the car over to me in P3. So I think we're in the points lead now, championship points lead. So uh, that was the goal coming here and uh, looking forward to a short turnaround for Mid-Ohio. So give me the lowdown on the new whip here. Uh, it's pretty fast, you know. Zero to sixty in like two seconds. She's cozy, that's for sure. You got AC? Have to. You got, you got a radio? Yeah. This is a no, computer. No car. tunes though. Oh. The tunes suck. Do they? <laughs> I will tell you though, it's pretty fantastic having a martini button. Laser beams, rocket boosters, and martini time. <laughs> 